Hello, my name is George Grant. I'm a GGS Pro Technical Specialist with Griffin. Today I'll be giving you a quick refresher on how to identify some of the most common insect and mite pests we run into during plant production. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to our technical team using the contact information provided on this slide. There are many different species of pests we deal with in ornamental and edible plant production. Here's a list of some of the most commonly seen pests we will be discussing in this video. Starting with aphids, this pest comes in every shape and size you can imagine. However, there are some distinct characteristics you can use to identify that you have an aphid issue. Regardless of the species, aphids have two cornicles, which look like two horns that extend out of the rear of the insect, as you can see in the photo on the left. They also leave behind their white cast skins as they molt between instar stages. Aphids are constantly reproducing, and at high numbers, they will even produce aphids with wings which are used to fly to other parts of the production space. So be on the lookout for those as an indication that an aphid outbreak is present. As with aphids, thrips can be seen with the naked eye. They move around fairly quickly and can damage plants significantly, even in small numbers, using their rasping mouth part. The damage they produce looks like scars or small scrapes across the leaf and flower tissue. They are always trying to attack new growth, so using a clipboard or a white sheet of paper, knock the new growth with your hand. This can dislodge thrips from the growing points onto a surface to better be seen. We call this a beet test. Thrips can also leave behind small black waste deposits as they feed that can be seen in the upper right hand photo. Spider mites can also be seen with the naked eye if you look close enough. However, you typically see the damage before you notice this pest. In hot populations, spider mites will produce a webbing around the foliage and flowers, similar to what a spider web looks like. They have a piercing sucking mouth part and reproduce in high numbers. Their damage looks as though something is pricking the foliage again and again, making tiny little dibbles on the foliage, most commonly centered around the newly developing flowers or foliage. Here's a close-up photo of a two-spotted spider mite and its eggs. The eggs appear to be perfectly smooth and spherical. The mite has two red spots on its sides, hence the name. They can be seen fairly easily with a 10x magnification jeweler's lens. Broad mites are one of the most difficult pests to identify because they cannot be seen with the naked eye. They do require additional magnification and they are great at hiding in the growing tips of plants. Most of the time when we see the damage they cause, populations have already gotten out of control. We can see two examples of broad mite damage here. As you can see, the damage worsens as the newer growth develops because that is where the broad mites like to feed on a new emerging foliage and flowers. With their piercing sucking mouth parts, they inject the toxin into the plant as they feed, which actually causes this excessive darkening, hardening, and distortion of the tissue. This magnified image shows a broad mite, adult, and an egg. The egg has a distinct shape that reminds me of a thimble for sewing or a squeaky dog toy you may buy for your dog. Moving on to fungus gnats, we see them in typically two life stages, the larval and adult form. The larval stage, as you can see in this photo, looks like a small, clear to translucent to whitish cream color with a distinctive black head capsule. They can be seen with the naked eye and like to feed on root systems. So it is very important to routinely pop out plants from their trays and containers to see if this pest is present. As we will see in a few slides, this pest can create quite a bit of damage if left unchecked. A good diagnostic tool is to slice the potato thinly into discs and lay them on the container soil surface. In a few days, you can come back to see if the fungus net larvae have started predating on the potato. Using a yellow sticky card, which is an essential scouting tool every grower operation should rely on for determining insect pressure and presence, we can see that fungus net populations are quickly occurring. Adults look more like mosquitoes and relatively are weak flyers. They like to hop around the soil surface. The adults do not predate on plant material. However, if the adults are present, we can be sure the larvae are present somewhere on the plant roots. Here we have a scenario where a grower recently transplanted a liner. However, it never took off. Upon further investigation, the liner developed pythium root rot. We can see in this photo that the pythium was secondary. It was actually the fungus knot larvae that predated on the plant roots, damaging them and opening them up for pythium to take over. This is a clear example of how disease and insects or mite pests can have a direct impact on allowing one another to thrive. Here's a close-up of a shorefly adult on a blue sticky card. Blue sticky cards are typically used for attracting specifically thrips. However, in our experience, yellow sticky cards are just as effective at trapping the widest range of pests. Sticky cards are meant to be a tool for 
any person to scout when, what, and how much of a pest is present. That aside, shoreflies look like houseflies you see around old gar garbage you sh that should have been taken out. They fly fairly quickly and can travel long distances as compared to fungus gnats. Similar to a mosquito, they develop their juvenile stages in standing water, such as puddles underneath benches, as compared to soil. Another contrast to fungus gnats is that shoreflies do not protate on plant material, regardless of life stage. This is another close-up of shoreflies on a pepper plant. Once again, shoreflies do not predate on plant material. However, they can spread disease throughout your production space because they travel quite a big distance. Aside from that, they are a nuisance and can be seen as an indication of the grower that standing water is present somewhere near the plants are being grown. Here we see a yellow sticky card that shows both fungus gnats and shorefly adults, as well as an indication of their size. When fungus gnats and shoreflies are present, we can assume excess moisture and algae in either your containers, underneath your benches, or walkways is also present. Lastly, the GGS Pro team at Griffin has recently released our fifth edition of the Technical Reference Guide. This resource provides a lot of detailed information ranging across the chapters you can see listed on this slide, including a helpful set of photos and procedures on insect and mite identification and scouting. Thank you again for watching this video. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to the GGS Pro team at Griffin or your local sales rep. Also, if you have any additional topics you'd like us to discuss, We'd love to have your suggestions. Thank you.